Hello, my name is Kevin McKay. I'm from the Department of Computer and Information Sciences at Northumbria University in Newcastle upon Tyne in the UK. Um, and today I'm going to be discussing our paper, which is titled Towards Explainable Abnormal Infant Movements Identification, a Body Part Based Prediction and Visualization Framework. So the motivation behind this paper was really to examine the feasibility of a automated framework capable of diagnosing cerebral palsy in infants. And as part of that, we really wanted to try and incorporate a visualization element to the framework in order to keep clinicians in the loop. Cerebral palsy is a condition which primarily affects movement, posture and coordination, but it can also cause problems with speech articulation, swallowing, vision and can contribute towards a reduced ability to learn new skills. It's actually an umbrella term which covers a group of lifelong neurological conditions which are usually caused by an injury to the brain occurring before, during or shortly after birth. It's actually the most common physical disability in children, affecting around about one in every 400 live births globally. The early diagnosis of cerebral palsy is seen as a key area of interest as it has the potential to allow for early intervention clinical care. The reason this is so important is that research suggests that early intervention clinical care provides the best opportunities for the child to meet their developmental milestones. As such, the early diagnosis of cerebral palsy is an active research area with some very promising results using tools such as the General Movements Assessment. The General Movements Assessment is a manual observation of infant movement which is carried out by a trained assessor. Babies are examined at a specific window in their development, typically between 12 and 20 weeks post term. The assessment itself typically lasts anywhere between 3 and 5 minutes and it comprises a video which is taken from above showing the baby lying on its back in a supine position. This video is then uh, analysed at a later date um, whereby specific movement patterns are identified um, and classified. These movement patterns are known as fidgety movements and they generally look for complexity, variability and the fluidity of the infant movements. It's suggested that if fidgety movements are present then the infant will develop normally and if they are absent there is a good chance that they will go on to develop cerebral palsy. So in this paper we're looking to try and address whether the assessment could be automated but whether we could also provide some sort of visual feedback to the clinicians as part of this assessment process. So in this slide we can see an overview of our proposed framework. If you look at the image going from left to right we can see the input image frames taken from our selected data set. We extract the infant's pose per frame, then separate this into individual body part sequences. These body part sequences are then segmented temporally into 100 frame segments before features are extracted for classification. A key part of our framework is the ability to provide a visualisation related to this classification decision. As such, we use the extracted classification for each body part and each temporal segment to produce an overlay which highlights body parts showing abnormal movements. So the input video data set which we're using for our framework is the Moving Infants in RGBD data set. This consists of 12 synthetically generated videos, each 1000 frames long. This maps real world infant movements to synthetically generated 3D models of infants. Each of the video sequences was labelled as normal, where fidgety movements were present, or abnormal, where fidgety movements are absent. So the two videos that we have on screen represent normal and abnormal infant movements. In the video on the left, we can see that there's greater fluidity, uh, less repetitive movements, and more complexity of movement. And these are the sort of movement characteristics that we're trying to differentiate between in order to form our final classification decision. So the first step in the process of extracting meaningful motion features is to use pose estimation to extract pose data from the input video. And the reason that we use pose data is that it is able to deal with external factors um, such as parental intervention um, or clinicians coming into shot. And it's also able to provide anonymity whilst retaining human interpretable data. Each video from the mini RGB data set is converted into a sequence of images and we use this for skeletal pose extraction. So we make use of the open pose framework to extract 2D joint locations from the video. 
So each key point contains the x and y coordinates of the joint location within the image, as well as a confidence score estimate. In the image on the right, we can see an example of the output skeleton produced by OpenPose. With the pose extracted from all frames, we're then able to extract meaningful features for analysis. So in our framework, we group the joints into five specific body parts, forming part-specific sequences. These body parts are the left arm, the right arm, the left leg, the right leg, and the head and torso. These part-specific sequences are then segmented temporally into 100 frame segments. We then calculate the histograms of joint orientation, which represents the predominant orientation of the body part across all frames of the temporal segment. And we do this for all body parts across all temporal segments. The second feature which we extract is the histograms of joint displacement. And this represents the amount of displacement exhibited by the body part across all frames of the temporal segment. Again, we do this for all body parts and all temporal segments. In our case, each feature is represented by an 8-bin histogram of normalized data. Finally, we fuse each of the features together for each part-specific stream and each 100-frame temporal segment. This means that each video is represented by multiple histogram-based motion features, which we can then use for classification. So the fused HOJO2D and HOJD2D are then used as input for classification on each body part and each temporal segment. Since each video is annotated as normal where fidgety movements are present or abnormal where fidgety movements are absent, we label all the fused features extracted according to this holistic annotation of the video. The results of this classification process are then fed to both the visualization module and a final classification module. Because we process the video sequentially, we are essentially detecting fidgety movements spatiotemporally, allowing for a relevant visualization to be generated. For the final classification, we represent each body part using a single scalar score. This is the average score of the classification result for all of the temporal segments for each body part. We then fuse these results together so that each video is represented by the five scalar scores between 0 and 1 for each of the body parts. This means that we can then generate a binary classification using an ensemble classifier to predict whether the video is considered normal or abnormal. So an important part of our framework is the visualization module. And the reason this is particularly important is that most of the existing architectures that are on offer are generally considered to be black boxes. And whilst this is acceptable in typical computer vision tasks, it's less preferable in healthcare and medical applications, since it is essential for clinicians to be able to verify the prediction as well. So in order to make our proposed framework more interpretable, we included a visualization module which highlights the body parts that are considered to be exhibiting abnormal movements based upon the general movements assessment and our body part based predictive model. So the architecture of our system allows us to take the separate classification result for each body part and each temporal segment and allows us to produce a visualization. In doing this, our system is able to provide additional information on the importance of each stream in determining the overall abnormality of the body movements. In order to generate the segmentation used for our visualization, we use the CDCL pre-trained body segmentation model. The part-specific streams are then mapped to the relevant body part segments generated by the CDCL model. In doing this, we're able to highlight the relevant body part segments in red to indicate the absence of fidgety movements based upon the scores computed by the body part abnormality detection. In the image to the right, we provide some examples of the segmentation and the associated visualizations produced. We compare our method with several others from the literature. We follow the standard protocol in the related works to conduct a leave one subject out cross validation. This ensures the results presented were obtained based upon data unseen during the training process. We know that by using our framework, we achieve state of the art performance with 100% accuracy, sensitivity and specificity on this data set, while simultaneously improving the interpretability through visualization. In this final slide, we're showing an example of the visualizations generated by our framework. In this example, we can see a video which was labeled as abnormal. From the visualization, we can see that the highlighted body parts are generally showing less complex or more repetitive movements, aligning well with the criteria set out in the general movements assessment. So to conclude, in this paper, we have discussed a framework for the prediction of cerebral palsy in infants based upon the characteristics of abnormal movements established in the general movements assessment. 
We have proposed a part-based prediction and visualization framework using pose-based features. We have compared our framework with several other methods from the literature and shown that our framework provides state-of-the-art performance in this classification task. We have also demonstrated the visual feedback module embedded within our framework to help improve model interpretability. Thank you for your time.